And now, it's time for Healing from Within with your host, Tony Valen. Welcome to Healing From Within. I'm your host, Tony Valen. You can contact me, Tony, at TonyValen.com, or visit our website, HealingFromWithin.net. Follow the show on Twitter, at TVHFW. The show is also available on iTunes and YouTube. Just search Healing From Within with Tony Valen, or look for the Tony Valen channel on YouTube. Joining us on today's show is Dr. Kimberly McGeorge. Kimberly is a quantum energy healer, frequency master, naturopathic doctor, and remote viewer. You can learn more about Dr. Kimberly McGeorge by going to KimberlyMcGeorge.com, like Kimberly on Facebook, Dr.Kimberly-McGeorge-ND.CNH, and follow Dr. Kimberly on Twitter, Serene Wellness. Dr. Kimberly, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Hello, everybody. So let's get started with the first question I always ask my guest. What are your gifts and how did your journey begin? Wow. Like much of our own journeys, and I'm sure yours as well, it was kind of an evolving journey for me. So my um, extra sensory type abilities, I became aware of that it was very different as a child. So I always tell the story, I think my first conscious awareness of one of my strongest abilities, which is that of an empath, happened when I was three years old. And it happened because I would hear sirens at night, occasionally, you know, fire trucks and ambulances. And I would put the pillow over my head and I, it didn't stop it because what I was trying to stop was these horrific visions that I would see after that would be triggered by the sound of these sirens, you know, things like rape and suicides and murders and accidents where young children died. And so I was trying to block out the sound because that was my doorway to my empathic and I didn't know it at the time, but that those are really also remote viewing abilities. So that was my first awareness of my, um, I guess you would call, you know, my extrasensory, you know, which we all have in, in some level and we all have different ones. And, you know, some of us have them developed and some of us don't, as you well know. But my healing journey evolved. Um, well, I guess I kind of skipped the middle. The middle journey is kind of when I was an older teenager and in college, I got involved with the paranormal because people in college became aware of my ability to accurately predict um, things about their boyfriends and girlfriends and their family and whether they would get a certain job or not. And, you know, when their boyfriend would propose, I was pretty close down to the day. And so I got this reputation for kind of like being a psychic in college. And that evolved into some paranormal work because I was very sensitive to energies in people as well as buildings. So I became involved A little bit with occult crimes in the police department. I helped out a couple of times. That was really difficult for me and challenging. I was only 20, 21. So some of that was really heavy for me, and I didn't understand how to process out some of that. So I didn't really get super into that. Um, I kind of stayed involved with the paranormal. Um, I performed my first exorcism, um, I believe, when I was 20 or 21. I'm not sure. I'm not older, so I don't remember um, quite the age. But in college, I performed my first exorcism, which I don't know if you've ever been around that or involved in that. But again, it's it's quite traumatizing to the um, person involved in that as almost as much, not quite, as it is with the person that is dealing with the entity. So that's a whole other story. I don't want to get off. But my healing journey began after I was a young mother. And the tip off is when I became pregnant, my body would go into what they call a death state. So instead of gaining weight with the baby, I would lose weight and I would not be able to eat anything. And I would, it beca- I would develop this wasting away. It was crazy. 
and nobody could figure out what, you know, they wanted to give me, you know, medication and they wanted to put tubes in me and, and they didn't know. They were all guessing. They were like, we've never seen this. It's like so weird and we don't understand it. And, you know, they test my hormones and, but, but all the solutions that they proposed weren't compatible with what I felt was best for the growing life inside of me, as well as for me, it just didn't make sense to throw a bunch of drugs and a bunch of anti-anxiety medications and a bunch of just randomness, you know, at this mysterious thing that no one knew. So why are we medicating it in random ways? It just didn't make logical sense to my mind. And so I started doing a lot of research myself into alternative medicine. I started experimenting. Um, I figured if they could experiment, you know, I could experiment too. And I started experimenting mostly with herbs and natural supplements. Mm -hmm. And I started finding relief from my conditions. And as I conquered my own health problems and my own mysterious imbalances, I began helping other people, not for money, just because people would hear or I would talk to people and they would say, so I always joke that my ex-husband actually got me into it because he got so sick of the phone ringing, like random times, all day, all night. People started calling. I lived in Ohio at the time from all over Ohio, eventually all over the Midwest. Eventually, I became a um, herbal writer for an international magazine and it even got worse, but uh, one day he said, you need to monetize this. If you're going to take all this time away from the family for someone's cousin's grandma's uncle's sister, you know, in Hawaii, that's calling you, asking you, you know, what to do for their arthritis, then you can monetize this. So I opened up an herbal practice first and then eventually I went on and received um, a naturopathic doctor degree. But I, my practice really evolved from physical substances, which is handing people shopping bags of herbs and um, supplements which are, are very expensive and compliance is very low, when to bring your body to balance and to really get the results that you'd like to achieve, you have to spend you know $500 and take 30 pills two times a day. That's challenging for most people. Some people can't even swallow pills. So I switched to practicing a more homeopathic form of medicine. I started experimenting with homeopathic medicine, which is really interesting because actually in my spiritual belief system at the time, I had kind of been taught that homeopathic medicine or energy medicine was kind of like magic and witchcraft, and it's something you stay away from. So it was a real huge philosophical spiritual switch for me to allow that possibility that there's there's other things, and it, just because you don't know about them doesn't mean that they're necessarily some of these labels that we put on things like evil. Yeah. So um, I started giving people, um, I'm really good at applied kinesiology. I learned applied kinesiology from a chiropractor a friend of mine. She taught me through applied kinesiology, I was able to get down to the why you have what you have. And if you know what the imbalance is, well, then you have a chance of correcting it. So from there, um, I was introduced to a woman way, way out in the country in Ohio. He had this magical machine, which is basically a sophisticated, expensive medical device by a feedback machine. Called an, it's called an MSA machine, mm. but it works on the same uh, principles an ultrasound um, or an MRI scan. It's just applied very, very differently. I apply it a lot more broadly even than most people do, but but it's a, it's applied differently than those technologies. These are very specifically applied um, sound technologies, but uh, this is much more broadly applied. Did becoming a single mom of four daughters have an influence uh, or an impact on the life path you chose? Well, like I said, my ex-husband had a hand in um, kind of me stepping into he yeah. the healing arts as a career. So yes and no, it kind of had more of an impact on the other side of my abilities, which are my own abilities. Mm -hmm. And when my five-year-old came to me and I had no idea, which was dumb of me, um, I never thought, I don't know, you're a new mom. This is my first child. You, you guys have to give me some break. I'm like, yeah. oh my gosh, I never thought my children might have abilities since I have pretty high level abilities. Why wouldn't my children possibly have natural born strong abilities? I never thought about it till my five-year-old, my firstborn daughter came to me and said, mom, why is there something wrong with my eyes? I see colors around everyone. And then because I was open to that conversation, I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. You can read ours. You can see ours. And we start talking about that. And we opened that conversation. Then she told me the even bigger thing, which you might appreciate more, Tony, but um, she told me, and I see people everywhere. And I'm like, well, let's talk about this. Well, it turns out that her ability to see is 100% turned on. Like not just ours, but she has the ability to see spirits. And I say on the level, if anyone's ever watched Ghost Whisper, 
that is her world. I mean, we would drive down streets, you know, in the town that I lived in, and she would say, do you see that woman standing in the window? And I don't see 100% of the time as far as spirits. Um, that's, it's not my strongest ability. You know, maybe I see 40 or 50% of the time, but she sees 100% of the time, and I would say no, and she, and, you know, then we would know, oh, okay, you know, that's yeah. a spirit. So that was really cool, but I think I developed those abilities and stepped fully into that and started using them boldly and publicly, mostly because I discovered that I felt like I needed to be a role model that I didn't have of um, how to be comfortable with who you are, even in the face of possibly a lot of opposition. Yeah. And your daughter, when she sees uh, spirits, does she see full body apparitions or, or does she just see energy? No, she sees full blown. Like I said, it yeah. is. You know, it was so nice for her, you know, when Ghost of Spirit came out, because she's like, that that's me, Ma. That's me. That's how I see it. But I see it like that everywhere, you know. Um, and I've had the experience. I don't know if maybe some of your audience or maybe you or other people listening have had the experience. But it is a freaky experience to drive through your town and all of a sudden there's a full body apparition standing in the middle of the road. And for your mind to process that, especially for me, because I don't see 100 percent of the time. Mm-hmm. So things pop in and out and depending where I am and how open I am you know I can see stuff and when I try I can remote view um, apparitions really well but but when I'm not tuned into it it's very startling when they pop up into your environment but for her it's not as much because she sees everywhere I guess yeah and you know for me uh, I can see the full bodies but only and this is weird only when they recently have passed on is when I can see the body but if it's someone that's been gone for a while all I see is energy that's, That's why I was asking. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. And and I find that so fascinating. And, you know, we could go through all the various abilities that, you know, people have. Everyone's so unique in how they perceive energy or how energy presents to them. It can go both ways. So I find that interesting, too. Yeah. So are all your daughters, uh, do they all have abilities or just your, just that one daughter? No, it's funny because at first I thought... I'm so silly. I know. I don't learn very well sometimes. I thought, okay, well, she's the one that got, you know, the abilities. That's great. Yeah. But as my, you know, children became older, I discovered that my second born daughter, who's now 18, she is, she has a really unique ability. She has the ability to heal. She's a healer. She would walk in the grocery store and her whole body would tremble from restraint that she had to put on herself to avoid physically laying her hands on people. And she sees energy on people as arrows and symbols and shapes. And she also had the ability, and this has been in the past couple years, I've discovered this, maybe three or four or five years, um, as she's become a teenager. And I don't know if it's because her abilities, they say sometimes when you become a teenager, they come in more fully or they change. But she now has the ability to do what I call Um, a soul imprint picture, which is fascinating. She can go down to the core of a person and draw a picture of symbols and shapes and pictures that tell me and her, because we both interpret those Mm -hmm. so much about us, things about your DNA, things about your family line, things about contracts that you've made, um, things about uh, implants that you, you might be connected to, people that have implanted you or you've connected to groups of people. I mean, I could go on and on. Um, but, really interesting so she just has some really unique abilities and my I'm not so sure about my third daughter but my last daughter um I believe is a is an empath that's her main skill so they all kind of have abilities I think that's wonderful that they have a mom that supports and understands that and doesn't tell them to suppress it because that's I think that's highly important as to who they are and and how they accept things because I remember being a child and and I've always seen auras like your daughter Mm. And uh, I had no one around to to tell me it was okay. If anything, they told me that I should suppress it. So I uh, had the hardest time trying to understand what was going on and also trying to determine what other people could see that I could see or could not see. It was just really a different world and a different time, actually. I understand that, too, because when I became aware that people did not process energy the way that I did, I felt very crazy, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I, and I still, even though the world is so much more open to the paranormal, as you know, and they think these abilities are kind of cool now, yeah. but 
you know, growing up in a very religious home, you know, number one, it wasn't cool in my family. And to be honest, it's still not. It, it wasn't cool among, you know, elementary friends. You know, they did not experience, you know, what I experienced. So I, I really cut off a huge part of myself and tried to conform to what other people's experience of reality was. That's how I handled it, which I guess you kind of are saying a similar thing. Yeah, yeah. What is quantum energy and how do you use it to heal? I use the term quantum energy, which is just energy available from the quanta, meaning every space that you see between anything, you know, is the quanta, you know, whether it's outside of the earth or, um, you know, energy is everywhere. So um, quantum healing to me is just, being able to access the energy that's around all of us and in all things and directing it in a concentrated manner to evoke change, not just healing, but to evoke um, lots of different kinds of change. What is a frequency master? Now, that's a term I came up with for myself because um, working with frequencies for the last 15, 20 years or longer, I have become very familiar with the very subtle, specific um, frequencies of energy. So, um, and, and we all know this, you know, like love, love is a broad term, but there's so many different kinds of love. And so, you know, after being in so many people's energy field, doing readings, and after working so much with health and the frequencies of health and wellness, and everything has a frequency. I mean, each individual has a their own frequency, which is the sum total of all the frequencies running through their physical body and their energy fields. But each thing um, has a frequency, each emotion has a frequency, each color has a frequency. So when you're in these frequencies, and you know, Tony, the more you use any ability or the more you kind of dig in and absorb it, the better you get at what you do. And I just became really, really good, whether using my machine or not, uh, which is one way of processing frequencies, you know, through advanced technology, but I also am really, really good at reading frequencies, but I'm also really, really good at changing the frequency of raising the vibration in people and situations of directing um, energy, of clearing energy. So I call myself a frequency master because I feel that to a really high level, I'm really, really good at what I do. And that is my specialty and has been for many, many years. Right. And, and, you know, and I want you to know, Dr. Kim, that when I ask you these questions, I'm specifically asking about your ability because we all have different gifts and different ways of interpreting. So uh, even though this may be a mean something else to someone else, I want to know or I want the listeners to know what it means to you and how you work with it. So you use frequencies to heal people. How is this done and what tools do you use? Ex- explain the process. Okay, well, there's a couple different processes. I am able to, if you were to call me up for reading and we're not using what I call the machine, the MSA machine, so mm-hmm. put the machine out of it. So if you would call me up to reading and you said, I'd like to work on health, what I would do is I, I pull up a holographic template of the person. And the way I enter into energy is with a very specific question. So someone asked me a very specific question about, I mean, not just health, health, love, money, career, life purpose, I mean, a million different things, mm-hmm. um, the energy in their house, you know, whatever. But I enter in through a very specific question. That's why I enter into the energy. And so I would pull up the energy, you know, if it's the energy of the house, I'm going to pull up the energy of your house. If I if it's, you know, the human body, I enter in, and I either pull it up and look at it. It's kind of like you're standing in front of me. Or, and, or I go, I have the ability, and I don't know if this is my remote viewing ability or the combination of the empath and the remote viewer, but I, I can be somewhat of a medical intuitive. Actually, I am a medical intuitive. I just yeah. don't always use that. I can crawl inside the body down to very microscopic parts. So I can look at the cell from the inside out and the outside in. And so, of course, I'm not a medical doctor and I don't claim to be, and I don't diagnose or treat disease. But I'm able to make recommendations and suggestions based on how I'm viewing your physical body, your energy. So no matter, so if you, and and I kind of call it timelines, and I don't, that's not really a timeline, but I can also pull up timelines. So I can enter into the energy of your love timeline, and it can be past, present, or future. So you can say five months ago, you know, was my husband cheating on me? Who was he cheating on me with? You know, and oftentimes the longer I'm in the person's energy, the longer I'm in the timeline, the more specific I mean, I can, you know, get movie, kind of see it like movie. So I can say, you know, he was at this restaurant with this woman, or I can describe a scene or a situation. And um, so that's kind of how I work without the machine. With the machine, 
I can, I don't have to, but for the benefit of the person because of their belief system of how energy works, mm -hmm. I use a signature or a picture. I actually can go into anybody's energy anywhere in the entire world, which is kind of threatening to most people. So obviously when they give me a signature or a picture, they're giving me permission yeah. to enter into their energy and it's, you know, that ethical thing. Um, so with the machine, I run a scan, which is basically, you know, I have, you know, 250,000 um, frequencies, you know, in this computer program, colors and planetary energies and geopathic stress and um, homeopathic remedies and flower essences and on and on, you know, vitamins and even medicine, because some people call for prescription medicine, believe it or not, their energy field, it does balance them. So I have all sorts of frequencies. So we put together, um, you know, what's going on with you right now, what will, what frequencies will bring you to balance not just in the physical body, because we're not just a physical body. We're a soul, and we have a mind, and we have these other subtle energy bodies, as you know, Chani. And so what frequencies will balance you quickly as a whole? And then I record that into um, an MP3, and I give you a music version and a silent version, and I give you a recommendation based on AK, Applied Kinesiology, of how long it will take you to absorb these frequencies into your energy field and affect maximum change. So... Go back to my abilities. When I'm looking at your situation, <clears throat> I can move energy. I don't violate others' free will because that's not how I operate and that's not the purpose of what I do. But I can go into the, the body and the energy field and clear blocks or dark energy or masses of energy or, or just the way I see energy. I can move that and eliminate that and change things in the energy bodies, the auric field. And, the, and sometimes shift things in the physical body. Do you have like a team of spirits or is this all based on you, only you doing this or is there someone else assisting you with this? My personal belief is that this is an ability. It's hard to say what my strongest ability is. I mean, the healing, uh, you know, I'm passionate about healing and bringing people to balance in all areas of their life, um, not just health, but love, abundance, money you know, connection with spirit. So my personal belief is this, an, this is a gift given to me, and I believe by God, to be used uh, for the benefit and the highest good of mankind. I don't believe that this is something that I'm allowed to not do, if that makes any sense. No, As I a do. matter of no. fact, I stepped out for a year and a half to take a break because I kind of got too many people and I got too well known too fast and it was very overwhelming to me and um and I had to kind of step back and say okay I need to be a mother and I need to get my you know make sure that you know I'm I'm doing what I need to be doing and I and I actually entertained the idea Tony of not doing this ever again mm -hmm. and I was really called I tease my wonderful amazing clients I tease them that they called me back but like they called me forth, but, but I think it's a combination. I think when you have certain abilities, just like yours, Tony, I almost think that you have, it's hard to explain that. No, I get it. I have uh, to do that. I have to do this. I don't have a choice. I feel, and this is important. And I want to share this with your audience. Mm -hmm. I firmly believe, and I know you do too, Tony, that we are not here by accident. Whether you think you are or not, Every single person has a purpose, and they were appointed to this time in this place, whatever that place is for you, to affect their environment, whether that's in a tiny, tiny way or whether that's in a huge way, you're still part of the whole, and you're still here for a reason, and you have unique gifts and abilities. And so these are just mine, and so I believe we all have that same calling, you know, that I feel it may be in different things. You may be a writer, you may be a musician, you may be, you know, called to be the most amazing mother or the wife or husband or daughter or brother. You know, I'm not telling you what your calling is, but, you know, that's one of the things I do. I help people discover and find their gifts so that they can feel that sense. You know, so many of us go through life not know, having that passionate soul purpose. And I think that's so important to becoming whole. Yeah. And you know that, uh, I, I don't know about how you went through it or, or what happened to you. But I know that for me, I always felt I was here for a purpose or for a reason. And I couldn't find that purpose or feeling until I started doing what I'm doing now and, you know, using my abilities. And that question has gone away. And I have this sense of satisfaction, which I'm sure you feel too. Oh, it, it's beyond, it's beyond satisfaction. It's, um, you know, I'm happiest when I'm in the energy and I'm working. It's almost like, you know, I lose the sense of self 
Yeah. Which is actually how you find yourself in the industry. Yeah, that's way. true. I agree. Um, I saw a quote on your web page. It says, where science meets possibility. Can you elaborate on that? Um, and that's a lot where the machine comes in because, you know, we know we're so advanced in medicine, really. We have so many people love machines and we have so many, you know, advanced, you know, surgical techniques where it's like robotic surgery and they're watching videos and doing the surgery. And, and there's so much advancement in science and in the medical field in particular. And even in like the quantum physics um, consciousness field, there's a lot of, you know, experiments going on. And so, I really believe, you know, the machine part of it, you know, maybe you can't hook up a meter to my abilities and I can't prove my abilities other than results. But with the machine, you know, that's something that that I track and I have thousands and thousands and thousands of scans. And I just I just did a scan a couple of days ago. I sent the woman her MP3 and I do a voice recording mm-hmm. uh, is one thing I offer of what I find. And she was like, oh, my gosh, you know, she happens to be a a respected psychologist. And she's like, this is absolutely amazing. Like you pegged ABC. It's not me though. That's the science part. It's not me. It's not me. I mean, I sometimes use my abilities to add in or help interpret, but when I do the scan, it's not me. It's their energy field. It's their body telling me through a computer program and system what is wrong with them. I mean, and it gets really specific. And actually, these machines have been proven to be able to detect things before they happen. So they detect things in the DNA. They they detect things coming on in the energetic field because we know in alternative medicine, at least we know, maybe not in modern medical medicine yet, but we know that things appear in the energy field, and you probably know, Tony, before yeah. they hit the physical body. So this machine is able to detect can um, detect things in the energy field before it shows up as a disease that can be labeled. Of course, it always it also detects things that, that are labeled as a disease. As a matter of fact, I made the mistake. I always say I make a mistake because I kind of don't want to know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I put myself on the machine just for a couple minutes last night. Yeah. And I'm really, really busy right now. And it's wonderful busy, but stress is stress. Yeah. And the first two things that came up on me were heart things. And they weren't necessarily physical heart things, but yet it's a big caution to me because I'm like, okay, you need to chill out. You need to take time for yourself. You need to learn the lesson from when you took that year and a half off. You know, you need to step out of the energy. You need to step out of the work, you know, and and do other things that you enjoy. So, you know, even with me, it's very helpful. Yeah, definitely. I agree. This is Tony Valen, Healing From Within. You can contact me, Tony at TonyValen.com, or visit our website, HealingFromWithin.net. Follow the show on Twitter, at TVHFW. The show is also available on iTunes and YouTube. Just search Healing From Within with Tony Valen or look for the Tony Valen channel on YouTube. We're talking to our guest, Dr. Kimberly McGeorge. Kimberly is a quantum energy healer, frequency master, a naturopath doctor, and remote viewer. You can learn more about Dr. Kimberly McGeorge by going to KimberlyMcGeorge.com, like Kimberly on Facebook, Dr. Kimberly McGeorge ND CNH. And follow Dr. Kimberly McGeorge on Twitter, Serene Wellness. Dr. Kimberly, let's discuss what remote viewing is and how you use it to help your clients. I briefly touched on remote viewing. One of my one of the easiest ways to explain it, or easier ways to come into it, is um, from the aspect of my paranormal work. So um, paranormal teams would um, have me be one of their advisors or consultants. Because they wanted, they didn't want to go and blind and spend. If anyone's ever done a paranormal investigation, I just got to tell you guys, and I'm sure you know Tony. Mm. But everybody thinks it's like nonstop energy, and you're being attacked by spirits, and you're seeing amazing things, and you're hearing sounds, and you're getting EVPs, and um, you know, on and on and on. And really, if you do, you know, a let's say eight to eight paranormal investigation, a lot of it's really super boring. And and I have, you know, strong abilities, and it's still aspects of it that's really, really boring. So they kind of get me to kind of cut to the chase. So instead of asking, you know, you know, 50 random questions on EVP where they don't get any answer, I kind of guide them, like, who's going to be there, what they're going to look like, what questions or questioning lines to ask, and it kind of helps them get what they want to get and accomplish what they want to accomplish. And um, and then it helps because, you know, I can, I can go to their head and I can say, okay, this is a land issue. It's not just a house issue. You need to look at the surrounding 
um, houses, you know, the house next to it has some really interesting energy. Uh, I can kind of go in and see, you know, there's nothing really there. So you might not want to, you might want to double up and do two or three things tonight. I mean, there's just a lot that helps because remote viewing is basically how it works for me. And again, even remote viewers have different ways of how they process this energy. But if you just say a place, I can bring up the energy and go into it and start to talk about it and see different things. And again, the longer I'm in the energy, uh, the more detailed I can get. And I'm, I'm what they call it. I don't know how you work, Tony. I'm a specific um, psychic. So, or mm-hmm. a remote viewer. So I like specific questions, you know, how many spirits are in the house, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. You know, some people are like, it's not how I work. They get me on the phone and I'm like, you know, what can I do for you? How can I help you? And they're like, well, what do you see? I don't have a year to tell you what I see. I can't work like that. We have 15 minutes or a half hour. You have to tell me where to focus, you know, um, my energy and my, my vision. And, and I don't know how you work, but, but so often, you know, well, I see basically everything. So what do you want to know? (laughs) No. So that's how I work. And it's the same with remote viewing. You know, I focus on, you know, a slice of energy, whether it's a person or a house or, an event and we break that down and and get what you want out of it. So it's really client, my remote viewing, I use, of course, for my own purposes in my own life, but you know, with my clients, it's very client driven, you know, what do you want to know? I'm not just going to tell you what I see because sometimes what I think is interesting or what I think is important, they could care less about, to be honest. Yeah. And and I, I, I believe that having a specific question or working specifically with what they want to know is easier because you're right. A lot of information comes in. and uh, But the thing about it is that a lot of times what they want and what they get are two different things because what they get is what they may need. So I, I don't know if that works with you. You know, That is so interesting because a lot of times, and because I do timeline work, I can be very specific down to sometimes days, hours, minutes, Usually Mm -hmm. I stay with months or weeks, but um, I can be very accurate with when things are coming in or um, they look like they're coming in, you know, on the current path that they're on, if they continue on that path. And I sometimes say, do you want to know? One of my questions I get very, very often is, when will I meet my next romantic partner? When will I meet my husband, my wife, my girlfriend, whatever? Right. And I look. And let's say it's three years from now. I'm just giving you an example mm-hmm. that it looks like that's going to be more of a soul connection. I say, do you really want to know? Because sometimes I say three years and they start falling hysterically. And I'm not making mm-hmm. that up. No, Because no, to know. them, you see, I don't think that's very long to wait for like an amazing soul connection. I think that's like not long because to me, you know, those kind of things are worth waiting for. But to them, that's devastating because they wanted to hear next week. Right. So it does become challenging and, and it goes deeper when, and I, because of legal restrictions in America, I stop short of saying everything I see except with very close friends and family. So for example, let's say I go in as a medical intuitive into your body and I see a tumor growing on your liver. Am I going to tell you that? I'm not allowed to tell you that in that way. I may tell you a lot of things, Like, I think it'd be a good idea to go to your doctor and have a general scan or, you know, I may guide you to what I see, but I do not speak everything I see. I don't know if you do, Tony. I mean, sometimes I'm not allowed to say what I see, to be completely honest. No, no, I definitely agree with that. And, And that's the way I do things as well. You know, the first thing I do is ask for permission. And if they're okay with that, the next question right out of my mouth is exactly as one of my uh, friends says, Elisa Williams says, do you want to know everything? Mm. And, if, and if they're open to that. I like that. Yeah. Uh, I, I tell him, I, and like I said, I, I tell it like it is. Um, but there are certain things, you're right, that come to me. And the way uh, spirit communicates with me and tells me, they say, this is this and this is happening or this is this is going to happen. However, it's part of their life path, part of what they chose to learn from. So you are not allowed to disclose this, but give them guidance. So it's exactly what you just said. Oh, I like that. I think that's that's beautiful. So you kind of do the same thing. You give them guidance around it with maybe not specifically mentioning yeah, everything. Yeah. yeah. There was this one uh, one lady that uh, came across and, and you know, we went through the whole you know, may I have your permission? Do you want to know everything? 
And I picked up immediately that her husband was cheating on her. But I was also told that even though it's happening, don't bother telling her because she's in denial. She already knows it. She needs to discover this on her own. You may want to mention it or not, but it's happening. Give her guidance. So that's exactly what I did. And I think that's what I like about when I read your energy, which reminds me of me. I am the most, to a fault, honest person. Like, I say what I see. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I, and, and I and I warned them. I said, I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. If you want, you know, there's plenty of psychics, unfortunately, yeah. mediums, whatever. They'll do that, Tony, and you know that's yep. true. Yep. And that's how they make a lot of money, because they give glorious, amazing. And you know what, Tony? I've been on the other end of them, and I've known I've eaten it up, too, because I have things I want to hear, too, Tony. Yeah, absolutely. But, but it's not true. And I know it's not true because as you read the energy. But I still like to hear, and people pay a lot to hear what they want to hear. And so I know people have not come back to me because I haven't told them what they wanted to hear. I haven't told them they're going to be a, a multimillionaire and live happily ever after with, you know, Prince Charming or Princess Charming. And, you know, they haven't come back to me because that's not who I'm called to be. That's not, I'm not an entertainment purpose. I'm not here to lie to you. I'm here to, I call it facilitate the energy, you know, for your highest good into hopefully some spiritual growth to help you open your own abilities. And my, my desire, Tony would be that eventually I'm out of a job as far. I'd love everyone to be turned on and have their abilities open and have all their chakra systems and their energetic bodies connected to energy and to spirit. I would love that. Yeah. And you know, who we are really is, is like, in a, what you just said, I'll say in a quick little way, we're healers. We're, we're here to heal people. And it's not about telling them what they want to hear. It's about telling them what they need. Which brings me to a question that I, I think I forgot to ask you, and I, it's so important. What type of help do your clients come to you for? I mean, what's the general area that they come to ask for help? And what are the results? Well, there's a number. A lot of people come to me to shift the energy what they call shift the energy, which I call that too, in situations that haven't had a breakthrough. So maybe they've been looking for a job uh, for a year and a half, and they feel that there's something energetically blocking them. So I can look at their field, we can clear the field, but we can also clear every situation has an energy, every job has a situ- uh, an energy, every relationship has its own energy. So there's other energies outside of our own personal energies or other people's personal energies that can be affected um, when you know how, I guess is what I'm saying. So a lot of times people come to me to clear um, or m- propel forward a uh, situation. So when you clear up a lot of the energy in situations, things kind of have a course of their own and, and they work better. And an example of that is I was on a radio show maybe a month and a half ago. And it's so funny because I know this is a recorded show, but I'm used to having <laughs> a lot of colors. I've been on programs where I've had 300, 400, 500 Wow. people on the line. And so I'm used to having, you know, and this is ego and we know that. So I'm admitting, you know, I'm human, you guys, yeah. but, but I'm used to having a lot of colors. So in this particular show, it was the first show after I call it being called back and it was just a tiny little show and we had three callers. So we worked through the three callers and then I'm like, Oh my gosh, what are we going to do like for the rest of the time? So I said to the host, I said, well, do you have anything you'd like me to work on or any questions you'd like to ask me? And the host said, as a matter of fact, um, I work in law enforcement, and um, I have a situation where we've been trying to get a new program instituted where I work, and I'd like you to kind of remote view it and see if you can pick up anything that's blocking it. And I said, I'll tell you what, I'll start working on the energetics of the situation, you know, and, and I'll clear the energy in the situation while we're talking, because I'm a talker, as you can obviously tell, so I work while <laughs> I talk. So I'm moving the energy while we're talking. And I told him a couple things that I observed about us. I have to be kind of careful because it is a law enforcement situation, but yeah. about sharing details. But I told them some specifics about some individuals, what they look like, uh, who held the key. I said, there's a dense energy. Let's clear it. Let's get rid of it. Well, the next day he went into work and he played the part of the show that I shared this on with his partner. And um, it, it happened to be a woman. And so they listened to the show a little bit after a while after they listened to the show together, that little part I was on. Um, and talked about the situation, they got called into their boss's office. And I don't know if you guys know, like military and law enforcement, it's very much a bureaucracy. It's very hard to affect change 
Um, you know, it takes a long time. You come up with a lot of resistance sometimes. So they went into the office and they're like, oh no, you know, we're in real trouble now. He's going to be like, you know, I'm done with this, whatever. Well, this is what their boss said. He said, I was laying in bed last night and it was like a fog lifted. And I decided that I'm going to approve this program. I'm going to give you all the funding you need, all the personnel you need. And this is a go. And he was stunned. And he's even has abilities of his own. He was still stunned because it was so huge. Right. And um, <laughs> he actually has really high level abilities. But and so maybe his energy, you know, I believe helped. You know, he gives me credit, but I also give him credit for because I know who he is. But but what was really cool that I didn't know because I was viewing his office. I wasn't viewing the end result. This is what I didn't know or what I didn't have time to get into the energy and look at. This he worked in. A, he works for the prison. So this program isn't just going to affect like three people or a hundred people. This program that they're instituting is in a large prison and that energetic change is going to affect thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people for who knows how long. I love that. I love, I feel so privileged to be able to do that kind of work, to be able to move large energetic, you know, in large energy situations or in small energetic situations. I mean, I can tell you health examples or love examples, or I'll tell you money examples. So people come to me a lot. Don't we all, Tony? We yeah. want wealth and abundance. Absolutely. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah. We're all human. So people come to me for that. So one girl worked with me in some programs I was doing. I do a lot of group programs so that people can afford to work with me. And, um, we were doing a program and she worked on a cruise ship and it had, and that's a fun job and that's a cool job. But it wasn't satisfying her sole purpose. So she worked with me and wanted to increase her income and step out. Well, through, I would say it only took her three to six months. And she left her job at the cruise ship. And she started becoming an inspirational radio host and speaker, like a motivational, inspirational, positivity um, type of person. And one day, I, I got an email from my PayPal. And it said, and I don't want to say the amount, but it you said you had, it was three figures. And it said, you have blank amount in your account from this person. And I'm like, I didn't, she already paid for the program. Why is she sending me money? And she sent me a note afterwards, a couple of minutes afterwards. And it, it was beautiful. It said, and, and I don't ask people to do this. I don't want anyone to think I do, but it was out of her heart. You know, she said, I'm giving you this much money because you've increased my income. And I felt led to thank you, you know, out of her abundance, she felt like, you know, this is ingratitude. And so I'm really hardcore. I'm not airy fairy. I want to see results. I want to see tangible results. And and I'm just really good at using energy to affect matter. It's it's something that's evolved. I'm not saying I think I've always been a really good manifester in my own life and um, being able to speak things into existence. But I've really learned how to help other people. But my goal isn't just to you come to me for the rest of your life whenever you need love or money or, you know, clear blocks or change situations. It's really I'm really passionate about teaching other people how to do what I do. Right. You know. uh, and let me ask you the thing that I, I want to understand and I want the listeners to understand. When you say you move energy, how do you do that? What, what is meant by that? How do you move it? I kind of can't explain it. Um, <laughs> well, I'll, it started out. I physically would go, like, if I was talking to you and working in your energy field, and I still do this, mm-hmm. I, I physically, because I see, I pull up the holographic template of your body, and I can clear with my hands. I can go through it and sweep through it, because I do hands-on energy work. If you ever come to a seminar or a retreat with me, I will put my hands in your energy field, and a lot of times I teach people how to put their hands in people's energy field and affect change upon matters. So... You know, I am hands-on, so I can do that with a holographic template by pulling up your energy. And I can, you know, if you would see me right now, you know, I'm waving around my hands and I can clear blocks and manipulate. But when I do it in a situation, I do it with my mind. It's hard to explain. It's just, no, I get it. I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's no, like, secret, one secret method. It's just the way I move energy. And I think as my frequency has come up, And as my abilities have increased, I have become more able to do that more effectively, quicker. So it's it's something I've grown into. It's not something I necessarily always knew that I could do. Got it. So it's sort of like visualization. Kind of. Yes. Kind of like remote viewing, visualization, action. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, okay. Um, when you do, and the other question I had for you, you were talking about paranormal activities. Are we talking like you walk into a, a house that may be haunted or may have an, a spirit that is not at ease? Is that what you mean? Oh, absolutely. And even more, and I don't know what your personal beliefs are about this, but even more what I would call darker spirits or demonic spirits. Uh, I have a little bit of a funny story. I was working with a paranormal group, and um, a friend of mine called, and he said, you know what? He goes, you know how you remote viewed that place for us? Yes, last night. And I go, yeah. I knew what he was going to say because I knew what I did. And yeah. he, said, <laughs> he said, we got three EVPs. And he's extraordinarily good at what he does. Mm-hmm. And um, he usually gets hundreds of EVPs. He goes, did you do something? Because he said, I'm really angry at you because you made me look really bad. Because he was the guy responsible for getting the, um, and if you guys don't know, electronic voice phenomenon. He was the the sound bites. I know you know, but you know the audience. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, but um, he was responsible for that. And he, he kind of, that was like his kind of glory position. Like he's so good at it. Well, what I did, it was kind of an experiment. <laughs> really kind of, I love kind of experimenting. Without telling anyone, I had gone to that place energetically. And, and that's kind of another thing because that's more like, there's a little bit of an astral projection part of me too. But I had gone to that place and I had cleared it completely of the dark spirits because they were having really crazy things happening. So I just thought, you know what, to help these people out. I wasn't really thinking about the paranormal investigators. I was thinking about the people. So I thought to help these people out, I'm going to clear this house. But I did. And it, that was an evolving part of my work. Okay. Now I know that I can go and I can clear remotely that I don't have to travel with a paranormal team. I can, if they want me to, you know, even after they go, then I can work with the people and I can clear houses and spaces remotely. So that was a new piece of my work that came in kind of through that situation. Do you ever feel threatened by whatever you're trying to clear or something uh, that's stubborn and, you know, it, it won't go? And are you still able to clear them or? Absolutely. I felt threatened. I, I've had direct consequences of some of my work, which is, to be honest, why I and you can't do everything. You have to pick. I do a lot. I probably do maybe more than I should because I like to do everything that I do well. And I like to, like I said, experiment and take it to the furthest boundaries and grow in myself, not just with my clients, but for my own benefit. So I kind of pulled out of paranormal work. And I'm going to tell you one of the main reasons is for the protection of my children, because they are very psychically gifted. They are sometimes affected. They have been physically scratched by spirits that I have um, been dealing with, not necessarily in my own home, but they don't always come after me, but sometimes they go after people that aren't quite as protected or that I haven't placed maybe the right kind of protection around. So I pulled back, not just because of some of the attacks that have happened on me, I have worked against, I'm just going to, I'm not going to say anything specific, but very large, powerful groups. I've energetically worked against them because they're not positive. <laughs> And I have been placed under their on their radar, and um, I have been warned, you know, with phone messages. I've been warned. So really, I wow. kind of pulled, well because I'm a mother, it yeah. restricts maybe what I would naturally be drawn to to be more aggressive in what I call like the more spiritual battle part of this reality. Mm-hmm. I've stepped back from that because of my children. So um, I'm focusing more on other areas like the healing and the. The ener- I call it energy reading. I mean, you might call it a psychic reading, but the same thing. Uh, you know, so I, I kind of focus on, I hate to say the more positive side, but mm-hmm. I'm not at all denying and I teach a lot about, I mean, the negative side, because like I said, you know, a lot of people don't believe in polarity, but I say, okay, come with me to an exorcism. When you walk out, you're going to believe in polarity, you know? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but because I'm a mother and I still have children in my home, I, it was kind of a wake up call to be honest with you. And I don't know, Tony, if you have you ever experienced, I know I'm not supposed to like flip it, but no, have no. you ever experienced like a negative side of what the work you do? Um, yeah, but, but you know, the thing about it is that I, I don't, and this is just my personal belief for, and it has nothing to do with gifts or anything, but I kind of feel like if I, I, I acknowledge it, but I don't honor it because, and what I mean by honor is, I'll acknowledge it, but I'll drop it. I'll move on because I feel like by doing that, it goes away. It has no control over my life or anything. So uh, does that answer the question? 
Yeah, and I agree with you because I teach, um, I call it sovereign reality, baby, meaning we are sovereign in our own spaces. We are sovereign in this reality over any other entity or spirit, positive or negative. So I teach that too. Um, I just have dug a little deep in the wrong areas at times. So, you know, that's just my experience. And maybe I have put, I, I I would agree with you that I probably put, too much energy into the opposition possibly. So, you know, that's why I've chosen kind of a different path to focus on building up the light and the positive and kind of letting the other stuff take care of itself. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I mean, and I can't help it. And I believe that you have a show of your own on blog talk. Is that true? I do. It's called the secret to everything. And it's so funny because my girls tease me. They're like, mom, you know, you're not the secret to everything, right? I'm like, that's <laughs> not what it means. You guys. I mean, they're just teasing me, but no, the secret to everything is not me. You guys, it is, you know, in my opinion, it, it's, you know, energy and frequency. That's the base of this whole reality it, to me is energy and frequency. Yeah. And that's uh, so wonderful that I hear you say that because I feel the same way. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter what you call it, psychic, medium, blah, blah, blah. It's all about energy. And that's what helped me really connect and learn what I do, just knowing that it's energy, plain and simple. And that's all it is. And that's what you read, you know? Yeah, I agree. And and that's what you read. That's what I read. That's what, you know, many other people read. It's But I do find it interesting. We all have our own, you know, strengths and our own way of reading it. And, and that's that's what makes it wonderful. Yeah. And, you know, you asked me about if I ever had an experience with EVPs on my own. And it's so funny that I had never, ever in my entire life ever had an EVP or heard of them. Or, I mean, I've heard of it, the, the term, but I didn't know what it meant. But I was actually interviewing a lady in par- that does paranormal uh, investigations, and during the interview, we captured an AVP. That's so funny you say that because my show used to be very paranormal focused, and we would hear if you listen to some of my show old, old shows, you will hear people, entities, spirits talking through the whole thing. It's hysterical. So that's so interesting you say that because I observed just through observation that. Almost every time, um, you know, we had a paranormal guest on of any kind that we would have, we would capture EVPs on the actual show as well. I have a really funny story about EVPs that I love to tell. Can I tell it really, really Absolutely. quick? I promise I'll be really, really quick. So, of course, my daughters and I, you know, knew what was in our house that we used to live in in Ohio. And I didn't really manage it because it was just a lot of spirits passed in and out, good, bad, indifferent, evil, you know, it, and I felt like it was kind of like, cause it was a lighthouse, you know, not just me, but my daughters and they were attracted to our abilities and different things. So one day I'm like, you know what, I'm going to get some solid evidence of all the things we see in here and experience. So I left for the night with my daughters and I had a paranormal team come in and, and to my house and they captured a ton of EVPs. But this is the funniest EVP. And this was captured on, I don't remember the machine, but it's, it's one of the more sophisticated ones that the guys on TV use, but um, where it actually speaks the words like through, you know, it's like an electronic voice. I don't know what it's called. It's not when you record it. Like it, a voice it, box? Yeah, uh, yeah, it actually, yeah, it speaks it like in a weird electronic voice. Okay. And um, so one of the questions, um, I, I don't remember, oh yeah, um, the question that the paranormal investigators asked these the spirits in my house, they said, can you see us? And the electronic voice box or whatever you call it. I know there's a name for it. But it said, yes, you're all huge. <laughs> Are you it was really? the funny thing. Because these were very big, you know, big guys, six foot oh, guys that were God. very heavy. So the spirits were like, yeah, we see you. And, you know, we think you're kind of big. I thought I just thought it was hysterically <laughs> funny. So I, that was like my cutest. Because, um, you know, a lot of them aren't comical EVPs. But I think it's funny because you know that spirits have... Since it's a humor, so. Yeah, yeah. And no, the one that we captured, actually, and I can't uh, exactly figure out what it said, but I think it's just something like, uh, in a weird voice, it said, love me, or something like that. So I, I thought that was, like, really, I, I mean, it, it, it came across, and then I was like, did that really happen? Or I'm not quite sure if that's for real, you know. <laughs> wow, uh, that's cool. I mean, that's kind of sad, but it's cool. Yeah. You're also a popular lecturer and a teacher. Can you tell us about that? Well, I do a lot of um, 
I don't know, we call them telesummits. So I speak a lot on consciousness and do a lot of energy work where you can call in and get a little sample of what I do on many different uh, telesummits on the web. I also do, like I talked about, I do really intensive retreats, limited retreats where um, I teach you uh, different things. I teach some remote viewing. I teach some astral projection. I teach some psychic uh, opening. I teach some energy healing. Kind of just depends what the theme is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I do travel, and and I have a lot of invitations to travel again because of my children. I limit that somewhat. Um, I don't have the same freedom, you know, yet that I may someday have. But um, I do go to um, some of the, a few of the, um, metaphysical expos and I have been invited to lecture there. So I do kind of, um, do limited speaking now more than, I mean, less than I used to do, I guess I would say. Yeah. There's, there's a one, uh, a real big one that comes here annually. It's called the mind, body and spirit expo. Not sure if you're familiar with that one. Where are you, Tony? Oh, uh, we're in Tampa, Florida. Oh yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Do you speak at that? I have not in the past, but I, I'm going, I probably will this coming year. Yeah. You have an amazing, I mean, you have an amazing gift and you have a very uh, even, steady energy. So I think people really appreciate that and are drawn to that. Dr. Kimberly, I want to ask you five quick questions so that the listeners can really get an idea of, of who you are. Uh, would you mind answering them? You're scaring me, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> They're quick little an uh, okay, questions. Okay, okay, okay. Um, and the first question is, have you found your life's purpose? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Is your desire to relate to others a big part of your life's purpose? Oh, yeah. I feel I'm a servant. I mean, if you want to say, if you want to combine everything I just blathered on about during your show, I would just say I'm, I'm a servant of humanity. That, that's why I came in. I'm, I'm here to serve. Do you live a blissful life? I have the best life. When you, and you know what, and I would encourage anybody, and you know this, when you are living from your sole purpose, you will have a blissful life. You will not have a perfect life. You will not have a life necessary that you expect, but it will be so rich and you will, you will be so centered and connected. It'll be amazing. What do you want to be remembered for? One of the things I'd like to be um, remembered for is pushing the boundaries of energy medicine and energy healing and energy work, going to the next place and then the next place. The other thing I'd, I'd like to be remembered for, I'd like to be remembered for, you know, being an amazing mother to my children, to be honest with you. What is next for Dr. Kimberly McGeorge? Well, I'm working on a book called um, Frequency Master, oddly enough, and it, it really is going to be a manual um, that I'm going to use for a class that I teach. I'm really wanting to teach what I do to other people. So that's a huge part of what's next. Um, I'm also trying to move out of what I call my little small fish pond that I've kind of been swimming in and very successful in, which is, you know, kind of the consciousness realm. And I would like to go more mainstream. I'd like to bring what I do to the awareness of the general population. There's still people that don't even know that there's alternative medicine available. There's still people that don't know that, that psychics aren't crazy people, you know, like I, I, exactly. I'd, like, I'd yeah. like to change to affect change, I guess, on a more mass consciousness type level. Absolutely. And you know what, what you just said is exactly what my show's about. Well, that's what I mean. You have that beautiful, you have, it's such a gift where mine can be kind of a gift and a curse, but you have that beautiful facilitator energy. I mean, you're really good at it. So I, I think this is a beautiful vehicle for you. Our thanks to Dr. Kimberly McGeorge. Kimberly is a quantum energy healer, frequency master, naropathic doctor and remote viewer you can learn more about dr kimberly mcgeorge by going to kimberly mcgeorge.com follow dr kimberly mcgeorge on twitter serene wellness you are listening to healing from within with tony valen here on block talk radio airing monday through friday 6 p.m eastern 5 p.m central visit our website healingfromwithin.net or contact me directly, Tony at TonyValen.com. Please follow the show on Twitter, at TVHFW. The show is also available on iTunes and YouTube. Just search Healing From Within with Tony Valen, or look for the Tony Valen channel on YouTube. Thank you so much, and love and light from all of us here at Healing From Within. <music> 